Generative art and creative coding. Have you heard these terms? Is this something you're familiar with? It's something I'm starting to get into, and in a way, something I've always been into, but processing was my recent reintroduction to it. Processing is a language in a way. It uses Java, but it's an IDE and it has language constructs built on top of it, I guess. It's, it's got uh, variables. It alters the language a tiny bit. You don't have to be a Java programmer, I guess. It's really aimed at non-programmers and beginners. And it's for graphical programming, not GUIs, but I mean, you could use it for that, but it's, it's more for art. Uh, the beauty in algorithms of lines twisting and floating around or creating cool visualizations. Um, but under the hood, it's just Java, so you can do anything. You can connect it to devices. You can connect the things to the web. You could read data. Um, you can do all kinds of really cool things. And there's another one. It's called p5.js. P5.js is basically the JavaScript port of processing. And it can run right in the browser, which is awesome. Uh, it's so cool. I have a couple sketches up on the website now, and I'm going to do more. I'm going to definitely do more and be probably live streaming on this stuff. I find it so fascinating. And I started with QBasic programming. This And the, the creators of processing... They have a book out. Uh, it's a make book. I think it's called Getting Started with Processing. I was reading through that, and they talk about their first experience with programming with QBasic 2 and how easy it was to just draw a circle, draw a line, and colors, draw backgrounds, animate things, and things like that. And that's what I enjoyed doing. That was my introduction, too, was with QBasic, and I loved it. Um, Python, I kind of discovered Python as the new basic. I, I found it very simple, just like basic. Uh, QBasic is awesome. There are versions of basic around now, free basic and things like that. But I think basic is a, it's an old language that shouldn't be used anymore in a way. Because like in basic, you'd have to put line numbers. You'd put, you'd, you would type in the line numbers. You would say 10 or 100, and you can name it whatever. You'd often have line 100, 200, 300 right next to each other, so you could add more lines later, and you'd have numbers in between to fill in. But then you'd have go-to statements, too. You'd say, uh, line 100, start doing this, and then go to 100. That's how you would do loops. Um, so things like that are, I mean, people don't use go-to anymore. So it's, it, it's like a dead language to me. Um, it's cool, but there's modern things to do now. So uh, processing, if you haven't heard of it, check it out. If you go look up processing or p5.js, there's also a Python one. I think they call it processing.py, but I haven't touched that one actually. Um, you can find all kinds of really crazy things. It's not just art that spins. It's not just animated GIFs, but there's actually interactive ones where your mouse and they have special variables just called mouse X and mouse Y that are always populated with your mouse position. So getting mouse input, keyboard input, drawing shapes, uh, doing all kinds of really cool stuff, super easy. And it's actually geared towards the art community, not the programming community. The whole idea is for non-programmers to be able to kind of use programming without being real experts. You, know, you don't have to know anything about compiling or classes or anything like that. You can just get started and say, circle here, circle at mouse position. Cool. You have a circle that follows your mouse around. You know, it, it's very visual and it's very fun. Um, there's one big channel called the coding train. And that is probably the best resource full of all kinds of topics, everything from beginner programming to how to do all these crazy algorithms and how to do noise and waves and stuff like that. Um, Daniel Schiffman, I believe he also wrote The Nature of Code, 
book, which is available for free online. And my understanding is he was the third person that helped found the Processing Foundation. So his channel's great, The Coding Train. So go check that out. If you want to get a taste of what processing can do and how easy it is, uh, go check that out for sure. What else? I think I had a couple of these I want to touch on. Yeah, you should go try it yourself. Uh, that's all I can say. I'm going to do some tutorials on it soon, so keep an eye out. Um, or if you go to my website, you can find your way to my sketchbook or right now uh, on Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Uh, you can, it's under the recent post. Let's see, it was a new one. Um, there's only two, but I'm just complaining with it. It's a lot of fun. So what I've been noticing, and you, everybody who's watching this, you might probably already, if you're following my channel and stuff, you're probably already a programmer or in that space and not in the art space. And one of the things I'm noticing by just hanging out in their Discord channels is that most of the people using it are not good programmers. Um, and not, you know, I don't mean that as an insult, but they are not, they don't come from that background. They are artists uh, trying to figure out the programming. So I see a lot of kind of simple and basic mistakes or questions being asked. So I think there's a lot of opportunity for us who have more programming background to kind of help out in that aspect um, and help people understand the difference between passing a reference of a function for a callback versus putting the function with the parentheses where it's actually going to call the function, you know, things like that. So it'll be cool. And I think it's also fun for the people who do have a programming background to start doing something creative, a creative coding is one of the terms for it. So I've written on my, on my site, you can find a post about the similarities between music and programming, because I have a, an extensive background in music too. And I found a lot of similarities and misunderstandings, uh, but programmers are actually creative people, though they may have never learned an instrument or learned to paint or something, but you have to be creative. And this is one of the big misunderstandings I think is people think music is primarily a creative endeavor and they think programming is primarily a technical endeavor. But I think it's, they're, they're just as equal in both, if not more so the opposite. Music is actually very technical when you get down to it. The rhythms, your 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 you you know, you've got very discrete rhythmic patterns that you can chop up and mix up, uh, and you've got scales that you fit into, and there's chords, there's a lot of structure, the arrangement of a song with the verse at four bars and the chorus. And of course, you don't have to follow all that, but there is a lot of structure and technical aspects to music. Even when I'm uh, improvising jazz or blues and I'm going off a feeling and I am kind of going with my creative flow, there's a lot of technical things going on under my head. What scale am I in? What chords are being played? What is the rhythm? What are the other people doing? What, where are we in the song? And there's a lot of technical stuff going on being processed to generate the creativity. Um, so programming, and I think where people get confused and, and mistaken there is that when you approach a programming problem, you often open a blank page and you have no help on how to solve it. You just have to uh, figure it out. You have to figure a way to figure it out. And there may be many ways to do that. But you have to be creative and you have to think of a way to do that. So... There's a lot of creativity in the programmers and the coder community that I think can come out. And processing is, is so fun. And the cool thing about it is you don't have to have an intent or a goal. You can just go in there and start playing around, start drawing lines and rotating them and, and doing a for loop to move them around and then uh, making a function to 
wrote alter the parameters. Um, and then if you are good with programming, you can hook up an Arduino and do some serial communication and get inputs from gyroscopes or microphones. And with the JavaScript one in the browser, you can you just have access to the microphone and the and the camera because it's in the browser. It's so simple, um, and you can embed it right in a web page. It's really really cool. I, I can't stress enough how cool I think it is. And it's not that different from game programming, right? If you're a game programmer, you're doing a form of creative coding, I think already. But it's geared more towards the term creative coding is more for creating art rather than a game, but they overlap heavily, right? You can make games with processing um, and you can make generative art with a game, uh, a game engine like Unity or something. But, you know, they serve kind of different purposes. So my challenge to everyone listening, if you've never tried it, go look up P5JS. They have a web editor that you can play with and Find an example. Find any example. Go find one on the internet, copy and paste it. And the, the P5JS website has plenty of examples. It's full of documentation and references and example code. It's, it's great. I love it. I'm going to get more into it, and I hope you guys will like it too. I, people have been saying they want to see more live streams, like the live coding stuff I would do. And I think this is going to be right up that alley because... I don't have to have a goal in mind necessarily. I can just kind of live stream and play with it and see what's going on. And with the web editor, if I share the URL, you can open the web editor with the exact same code that I'm working on in your own isolated environment. So you can play it, you can run with it, you can tweak it while I'm doing mine live. Uh, you can even tweak it, do something cool and, and share it back with me and I can pull it up on the stream. Uh, you can just make suggestions and we can just see where it goes and, and just make cool things without having any kind of goal necessarily. So it brings a fun aspect to, to programming. Um, also, bonus points if anybody knows what uh, this logo here is on the shirt. Do you know this one? If you know, leave it in the comments. Otherwise, see you later. Over and out.